Yeah, for me, I really love like to do character design. Uh, I just love vehicle design at the same time. And what I even love more, it's putting everything together and doing the, like, you know, the final pieces that look very cool with everything that uh, I created and start to merge and create a little story with them. Like it's like playing Lego at, at the end of the day, but creating a new world with new shapes, design, new stuff um, that doesn't exist before, or just having fun. Do you have fun when you're making art? And can you even have fun when doing it as a profession? Our next guest, new Learn Squad instructor, Louis Laurent, fundamentally believes so. He believes it so much that he put that philosophy and his high-level artistry into a fully-fledged course called Dynamic Concept Art 1, which is available now. And in this episode, we get the lowdown to what went into the course, how Louis made it fun, and so much more. And before we begin, just a heads up. If you're listening as soon as this episode airs, then you can get this course at a massive 66% off as part of our Black Friday sale bonanza. All the links are attached to this episode, or you can head straight over to LearnSquare.com to sign up. Let's go. Okay, cool. Let's do this. Um, hey everyone, welcome back to the Learn Squared podcast. And I'm delighted to welcome on today's guest, Louis Laurent. Welcome, Louis. Hey, Aaron. Nice to meet you and very really glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for jumping on. Um, excited to chat to you today. And if anyone's jumping on and not aware of what's happening with Louis and Learn Squared, um, that's because he is our newest instructor and he's t- teaching not one, but two courses. Um, although the second one is still under wraps and top secret, but the first one that he's teaching and will be out um, already now available for purchase because this will be launching after we record it. Um, so just to not confuse anybody, the course is out now. Click it, get it, learn, make some awesome concept art because in this course, you'll be learning dynamic concept art one. Um, but yeah, before we get into that, how's it going, Louis? Well, uh, pretty good. <laughs> really happy to to release uh, the the first part of the course. I can't wait to see the, what the student uh, will come with and the, the great work that they will be doing. So yeah, really happy that uh, things uh, start to, to come out and yeah. Yeah, it's um, likewise. It's well, we spoke about this before. Um, just like kind of like you know the feeling around the course and one word that kept cropping up was the word fun. And not only is it going to be fun to take the course, um, it's going to be fun to see, like you just said, students interpret it their way and make their own projects. Mm -hmm. But it's also fun seeing how the course came together and also how you taught it as well. Um, So yeah, man, where did the the fun come from? Like, you know, (laughs) are you fun all the time? Do you party all the time? (laughs) Actually, a pretty serious person, I would say, like in uh, real life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's maybe like I have to, you know, to have fun when I'm doing uh, the, the work, obviously. But I think it's when, uh, as as well, when I, I got like my first big gigs, I was working, you know, um, full time uh, as a day, day, day job. So um, when I, I will like um, do personal project, I, I will I will just start thinking about the, the workflow that I had, stuff like that. And I wanted like to have something that is really simple and straightforward and really focusing on the fun part, actually, rather than, you know, that complicating uh, everything like at the job, basically. Yeah. So avoiding that and yeah, basically having fun and, you know, um, relaxing, doing personal work. And that's, that's why I think I focus more on the fun and the creativity part, but because at the end, that's what I enjoy the most doing rather than doing, you know, all the technical part and that can be boring sometimes at job. Yeah. Um, that's actually cool because it's almost, well, yeah, like you just described it, it's almost like the fun element was also a survival mechanism, like you said, just to kind of like get through the the professional tasks and, and everything. Um, and obviously you mentioned their workflow and yeah, it's very clear, like through the course itself. And I'm sure people are taking this because they've got the course already on pre-order and they're learning it as we speak whilst this is the podcast um, or maybe in the future um, that 
the key, one of the biggest things that stands out in the course as well is the workflow element, like from A to B to finished image and all the little chapters and all the little steps you take in between. It has got this effortless feel to it. Um, mm -hmm. And by effortless, not in a way where it's kind of like, you know, I just got to click a few things and it's done. Clearly not. There's definitely artistry involved, <laughs> but it's, it's more of an emphasis on just making sure you stay in that you know, like artist zone and that, uh, that creative zone, like you mentioned as well, um, less worrying about the technical things. Um, but again, with that said, there's a lot of, I guess you could say, technical elements in the course. It, we go from like digital, uh, we go to VR, we go to 3D, we use AI, we use all these different things in there. Um, so how do you kind of like manage all of these things to keep it into a simple workflow because or has, has it ever kind of gotten out of hand for you like you know dealing with all these different things or does that all come naturally mm, i think it's uh, it's actually a skills that you develop with time uh to simplify stuff and really uh, going straight for i think at the beginning you have to learn like everything uh and almost know the limits of each software and how you can use them and then you start to develop your own workflow and what you really love about the workflow. So for example, in Blender and 3D, I, I don't really like doing like texture for, uh, or materials for two or three hours. That's mm -hmm. stuff that I, I was doing before that, for example, in Octane. And, you know, with all the nodes and stuff like that, it was very a pain. And yeah, after like a, a day of work, you could not recognize your node system. It was completely like uh, full of stuff, very, very like complicated. But I think it's a great way to learn as well. Um, the very like technical and um you know deep aspect of the of the of the of the software and the limit so that way you can really cut off everything that you you feel you don't need and simplify everything that you for your need basically mm -hmm. and again for me it was really uh, about the creativity and the the fun and have something that is very easy to jump between 2d 3d maybe come back to 2d again to 3d this very feeling of everything is free, easy to, to jump between uh, everything. And so you don't like have the, um, it's a, the kind of time that you, you are cut inside. You are, you are in the flow, basically, yeah. and you are still creating. It's easy. You you don't have like to worry too much about uh, a technical stuff. Or, but I think at the beginning, it's, you know, it's all right like, to spend a lot of time learning uh, all the limits and other stuff. But that's why I use uh, VR a lot, actually. Um, VR is a huge part of my workflow. Most of the time, I start in VR because it's a uh, it's very sketchy and very straightforward to the to the end goal to the to the final point, and it's very like uh, um, delivering as well. Like you feel very free about the uh, in VR. Like it's it's very efficient. It's a uh, it's like a really sculpting with something in front of your eyes with clay, and that's definitely something that I really like, especially for sketching in 3D. Like you are not in Blender, you know, extruding uh, stuff. Uh, with polygon is very slow and uh, you have um and as well if you are it's a um, it's a good friend of uh, abstraction and happy accident and that's something that i really love about happy accident you know you start with an idea if something and then you finish you, you end up with something completely different but you even love it even more because it's something that you didn't predict uh, at the beginning so um so yeah yeah vr is i can care like it's it's super fun. And if anyone hasn't used it, you'll know exactly what we're talking about as soon as you get your hands on it. Because especially when you're creating, like as soon as you just start, it, you pick it up very quickly because it's very intuitive. I'm sure you'd agree. Yeah. It's not like you have to learn all these different menus and different ways. It's literally, you just have this magic sculpting tool slash drawing tool slash all these are different things, uh, you know, uh, sculpting tool, I think I've already said that, um, all in one. Um, and when did you kind of like first pick up VR? Because you mentioned a bit uh, a bit earlier about like um, Octane as well. So mm -hmm. obviously like, you know, the industry has always been evolving. It always has been, but I guess over the last five years or so, softwares or I guess the go-to tools have changed rapidly. Um, yeah. So when did that kind of like, I guess... And including the VR stuff too, when did you kind of start getting into these digital tools? Have you always been into this or were you kind of like... You mean maybe... like um, digital tool in general, like Photoshop? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Blender or yeah. specifically uh, VR? 
I guess all of it because uh, whilst I do want to get get into we can talk about VR I guess specifically perhaps it's like it's also fitting to kind of like touch upon I guess when you started picking up these kind of tools um, mm. because although you definitely use it in an artistic way um, they're not something that a lot of people will always kind of think oh I'll just, let's just get doing this because let's say you start drawing you move from drawing to maybe paint although it's still different there's still kind of similarities. You kind of can just easily transition mm -hmm. to it. Uh, but when you go to digital, especially with the tools and the software and the plugins and all these kind of things, um, it can get a bit wild and a bit overwhelming. Um, so I guess maybe all those questions asked before, let's put them to one side. Um, <laughs> maybe this question is better. Like, have you always been kind of like, I guess, comfortable in software and in digital tools and when did i guess your creative journey start in general yeah. like in terms of using tools well i think i used digital tool before actually learning drawing hmm. uh that's the funny part because uh, drawing is something that i picked up really uh i would say like lately in my life but my life is quite uh not long so <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I, I remember i think um when i was like maybe 14 or 15 something like that i was starting to learn like cinema 4d right. um and basically at that time um yeah it's funny it's very uh i think we, we played like a lot of modern warfare 2 with friends and we had like a team and we were doing like um basically like clip of us doing like uh, you know uh, crazy uh, shit in the game <laughs> And I was like the graphic guy in the team. So I was basically doing like, you know, the, all the, the, the graphic stuff, like the, and even like the, um, the, the montage of the, of the, of the clip and of the video. At that time, I was using Cinema 4D, like to learn some 3D and how you can like uh, do some effects and stuff like that. So it was more like VFX stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that for like, I don't know, like just for fun again. But uh, at that time, I, I was not really, uh, assuming that you could work uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, if you really push that uh, even further, you could work in, in some way. And yeah, so I, I, pick, I picked up like um, during actually for learning concept art. So it was not something that uh, I was doing uh, like as a kid or not, not, not that much. I mean, like every kid when you're really young, you, you draw, but uh, it was not something that uh, it stayed in my life. Ah, and so Yeah, go ahead, Aaron. No, 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 sure, yeah. Yeah, so um, so I think I, I took drawing really and start to learning uh, seriously, especially like the art fundamentals, uh, really to learn and to be concept artist as as a profession. I always saw that as a profession, and then it became it became really my passion uh, when I really started to learn it and you know discovering this world of art. And yeah, so digital for me it was something that is it was quite simple to make the, like the switch. Um, going to uh, and I already like we saw how you can apply the art fundamentals to digital painting because it was basically exactly the same you are doing an image and at, at that time i remember when i picked up as well doing a very important point is i i started to learn photography at the same time mm -hmm. and so all, all of this world you know 3d uh, it's really close to sculpting uh, drawing and painting it's really close as, as well to um, image making so photography at the same time like composition rule lighting Stuff like that. So everything like kind of you know merge uh, in one way, and you you find the same pattern and the same fundamental coming up all the time. So um, so yeah, but for the digital switch, it was yeah not that hard for me. Um, Photoshop that, that that was something that I, I knew and um, I, I never like painted with with Photoshop, but it was I knew like it, it won't like be that hard. You just have to understand the layer system and the mask and. and Actually, like it's really powerful, but you can do the same with painting. You know, you can mask your painting in some area and paint uh, the same. But it's just more straightforward and easier for you <laughs> to paint in Photoshop. Sick. Um, that's actually really cool the way you just explained that because it mirrors, and obviously naturally so because it's the way you've, I guess, developed your skills. It mirrors exactly in the course as well. Like there's all these kind of like, I guess you could say like a, a 360 degree like selection of tools and the way you were kind of developing like you said photography um editing digital mm -hmm. you know image making manipulation to the artist side of things as well um doing that all at once i think that's quite interesting and 
like based on your observations and the the people you was obviously like you know grown up around and developed around and i guess your friends in general like do you think that's like a a common trend now that people are kind of like very more digital fluent in terms of digital tools and like just knowing what you can get from software and i guess maybe that intimidation factor that kind of maybe used to be there a few years back maybe mm. like less now Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's even the opposite now. Like, uh, actually taking just a pen and paper is actually more intimidating now than that, you know, going to digital. So, because you know, with digital, you can do a lot of error and you have control Z and stuff like that. And yeah, sometimes I, when I do a lot of Photoshop and with friends, like we, we do some uh, drag and draw stuff like that. We cool. just take a pen and paper and, and a lot of time in my mind, like I, I think about control Z when I'm actually drawing on the paper, like it's crazy. Like, <laughs> oh, it completely mindfuck my head, <laughs> my brain. <laughs> so, so yeah, it happens, stuff like that. So it's definitely more intimidated. I think to, um, to take a pe pen and paper now. And I think the younger generation now we grow with, uh, with digital tools. So. We, we, we tend to understand, uh, I think like quickly the interface and stuff like that. There are so much resource as well online, uh, with people teaching, um, even free stuff like on Blender, for example, there is a ton of stuff. So you can, I think like take a really, you can learn the stuff really quickly and at, at your own pace. That's what is really good as well, because you know, you don't have like the pressure to, to be uh, in class with other people or stuff like that. So, so yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point as well. Like touching back upon the course also is, I guess for those that are kind of like yourself, fluent and comfortable with the tools, they can just get going straight away, mm. plan their project, get creating, building the assets and get painting um, and just finalizing the whole image. But equally for those that are kind of like, you know, still, I guess, um, trying to get used to the tools and trying to familiarize themselves in that aspect as well as trying to make the image as well, not only do you give a step-by-step -step process in terms of how you use the tools, the way you use them, but equally um, the way the course is structured is there is no rush, I guess you could say for them as well, because they can mm -hmm. easily take their time, learn at their own pace, get comfortable with the tools. And then once they're ready, all the fun begins, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I go through like uh, each step and I try to explain as much the technical aspect than the, the thought process behind uh, the decision that I make, um, that I made. So, um, so yeah, definitely. I mean, if you are like uh, still learning Blender, even VR, I think VR is very simple to, to learn. So I, I still like go over the tool and how you can use them and how I use them personally. So I think it's a good point for, for the student like to see how um, you know, the, the professional are using the tools. And so, yeah. And and just to, I guess, reemphasize as well, like, although this is, I guess, a new workflow and a new way of learning things, and it's fun as well, this mm. is something that you use daily professionally. Like, this isn't just, um, just, just, hey, look at this, you know, there's a new way of doing things. Like, this is something yeah. that you actually use on high-end projects. Um and speaking of projects and I guess working professionally, when did that start for you? Like when did it you break through into the industry? Uh, I would say like my big um, breakthrough was one year ago when I hit Framstar. Um, so it's not that long. Uh, but before that, I did like some uh, freelance work, um, working for bigger and smaller companies. Uh, Netis, I work with them, uh, Mood Visual, with, uh, which is... Um, concept art uh, studio. Uh, we did a lot of stuff with them, more video game. Um, and yeah, some stuff in um, for TV series uh, as well, like FX Network. Um, and then I, I eat Framstar and, and Framstar is very big. So you have like a, a ton of different projects, Marvel, Disney, um, Apple, Warner. So it's really cool to see all those projects. It's awesome like to see. Yeah? It's crazy actually. So, so yeah. And I'm assuming, um, although not, not trying to dip, dip too much into NDA to get you in trouble, but I'm assuming you work on a variety of projects of different styles, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it happened. Most of the time it's still like, uh, I would say like in film, uh, real life, uh, like uh, uh, realism. Mm -hmm. But it depends, like we have like, um, we have different projects that are definitely more uh, stylized and... Uh, 
so yeah no it happened but more, most of the time in the film it's uh especially at Trump so it's um it's more realism mm. and obviously like we already said that that's this is the workflow that you use on projects as well do you yeah. find that like when you are working on like say different maybe styles or different maybe like looks that the client wants etc or the project needs do you find your um, I guess this is, a, this is a loaded question, um, but do you find that your um, process and workflow is applicable to any project that you work on? Or do you have to find that you have to only use certain aspects or certain pieces yeah. from your workflow? Or does it always fit almost to anything that you tackle? No, no, you can tackle very anything you want with this workflow because if you have even like a stylized um, project, like a, I would say like a cartoon or anything, like it's all about the shape and the design you are going to use at the end. So, and even like the lighting, the rendering is this kind of stuff you can just tweak in Blender or during the paint over process. So no, no, you can really do uh, anything you want. So everything, uh, I mean, it's, it's really up to, to your skill and your fundamentals again, how, how you're going to interpret and fit into the style when you are going to sketch in the air, maybe uh, what shape you're going to use. Um, so, so yeah, no, it definitely fits any style. One of the coolest things that I like from the course and spoiler for the second course as well, this does turn up <laughs> in that course too, but we're not going to speak about that right now. Um, is the way you plan the project and i really found that like in two levels very enjoyable to watch but also it was a lot of value for me as well just the way you go through it and it's not like super complicated in terms of like you know like oh i gotta get all these files and arrange all this and get spreadsheets out and all that kind of stuff no it's done in a very artistic way um so that that's just again congrats on that because that's I know that's going to be super valuable for almost everybody who takes the course. Um, is that but like have you always been like that like that I guess kind of like organized and the way you plan your projects does that come naturally to you? Or is that something that you've had to develop over time? Uh, I would say kind of buff. Um... It really depends on the project. Sometimes I will like uh, just jump um, directly like in VR or even Blender or, or Photoshop and start to sketch. Or sometimes it's a, if I feel I want to create something bigger with multiple images, uh, something that is, you know, uh, a new world that is crazy with cool design and really push everything really to to the level where I have like maybe a vehicle design, a character design, environment design and put everything like in keyframe. I will start to really think about the Maybe the story, the background uh, of those characters, the vehicles, what, what's it about, like the function, stuff like that. But sometimes uh, just for fun and relax, I will just, you know, sketch directly and uh, think about nothing. Uh, some cool stuff will happen. But um, but yeah, most of the time I will stay, I will say like I'm still organized in my life. Like uh, I, I love to plan things. I have a plan, you know, uh, think about where I'm going to to go in the in the, the next year maybe or what project that I want to work on stuff like that so even personally like um, the stuff that I want to learn uh, so so yeah I, I love to have this kind of feeling that I know where I'm going basically mm. um that definitely shows again in the course as well because I'm sure whoever takes the course will see their own project like they'll see where it's going as well um and in the course itself, Although you see, you know, like some very nice final images, I guess you call them like keyframes, concept art, like anything that will again help your project, whether it's lacking in a visual, a style or mood or whatever it might be. But you make a lot of things. You definitely design and you almost like build a universe whilst you get to the final painting. Um, and it's very cool because you, again, like this is just like, I guess you could say, you know, maybe it's an environment piece, maybe it's character design, maybe it's weapon design, maybe it's prop design. It's kind of everything all in one. Um, is that on purpose? Do you do that kind of like because you like to tick all these kind of boxes or is there, I guess, more kind of like, I guess there's more intention behind it because maybe for work or maybe just for professional workflow, that is probably what's needed nowadays. Uh, I'm not sure that you really need to be like a, a generalist. I would say like in terms of uh, uh, like completely like doing everything in your portfolio to to work. I would say like it's even more uh, you should like maybe not not you should but 
uh, I will advise that maybe to you, maybe to specialize at least like maybe 60 or 70% into something that you are really strong and maybe you are able to do the other stuff. Um, but yeah, for me, I really love like to do character design. Uh, I just love vehicle design at the same time. And what I even love more, it's putting everything together and doing the, like, you know, the final pieces that look very cool with everything that uh, I created and start to merge and create a little story with them. Like it's like playing Lego at, at the end of the day, but creating a new world with new shapes, design, new stuff um, that doesn't exist before, or just having fun, basically. And I'm sure clients and art directors love that kind of stuff, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, because they, they love like new idea. They always come to you. We want a new idea with with a script that is a scene like a, a ton of time. But they, they come to we want something new and unique. That's the the favorite words. <laughs> um, and you mentioned unique. Um, jumping back to VR, I guess unique is kind of like a very subjective word. Like maybe too unique is off putting for some people. That you kind of mm. want to like you know close to a style that's recognizable but still different. But there's yeah. something unique about VR because you can really come up with unique things. Um, so when did you kind of like first discover VR? Um, or was it always like something that you kind of saw and that I need to figure that out? Yeah, no, I think it was like um, uh, Jama, uh, Jama Jurabaev, who, who teach a lot of uh, teach. Uh, before that, he was using a lot of VR. And nowadays, I don't think he used uh, that much. Um, but he, he used VR, I think Gravity Sketch it was. Uh, and I started like to to learn it. I, I saw the potential. At that time, he was like very big about it. Like he was, uh, this is the future and everything. It's a shame that uh, a few years later, they didn't develop that much uh, the different software. But th there is a great thing uh, in the horizon coming up. So maybe a new software, so we'll see. But um Gravity Sketch is a really good one. And then I, I saw really the potential and the, the, the freedom aspect and the result that, that, that you, you could have like in the efficiency as well of the tool. Like it's really very fast. Um, and then I, I discovered on Medium. So Medium is um, the software that I use inside the course, which is more uh, a sculpting tool, uh, like 3D codes uh, a bit. And it's a really, really powerful tool. And I saw the abstraction aspect where you can really do. I think you you just have to try to understand how how crazy it can mm -hmm. be, like the, the the freedom. But I saw a lot of people who let down VR at some point, like they 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 um, they don't use it anymore or stuff like that. And I think it's because it can be like a bit too sketchy uh, in a way. So it's really hard maybe to um, to have something very clean and very you know to the to the end result um but that's why uh, most of the time i use my vr assets that i modelize in vr i put them in blender and most of the time i do like a refinement uh pass where basically i will like really push the, the asset to the next level but i would say like the big medium small shape that are very important for the design are already made and that's the most important part like every, all the details that's something that I can do really quickly, like in, in Blender, or if I want to push it even more like in the brush, but I, I will still use a uh, Blender like most of the time and don't like push it uh, too much because at the end of the day, I will paint over most of the time. So, um, so yeah, the air for the sketch and the concept art abstraction stuff, like it's really, really good. I think most of my design, I, I won't even come, came up with them like in the past without VR. So for, for me, it's like really my main tool for design. Yeah, it's it's so so powerful. I'm sure people that have used it and still use it, or just be you know sharing the screen saying that yeah, of course, and we love this tool. Um, mm -hmm. But if anyone hasn't tried it, um, whenever you get a chance to, just 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 do it because it's it's really cool. Um, similar to yourself, whenever I'm working on client stuff, obviously time is of the essence, but it's not so much for that. I always crack out the VR headset because the ideation phase and just how quickly you mm -hmm. to explore. It's like drawing in 3d. Um, yeah. it's, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, and like you mentioned there, like with the abstract, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly the kind of like, you know, I can imagine exactly the kind of how your brain's all sparking with ideas thinking, oh, that could be this, mm -hmm. this could be this. Um, and it's also cool because actually, no, no, initially what did kind of bother me was you get kind of carried away with these kind of things and it goes crazy. And then what you end up with, 
can be very heavy or unusable. Um, but then in the course, the way you refine it, that just solves all of that issue straight away. So <laughs> thank you for revealing that. Um, <laughs> but in terms of like, I guess, VR itself, it's interesting what you mentioned as well, like how it was kind of like, I guess, like you said, it was the future at one point. And it's kind of like mm. waned away a little bit. I guess that's yeah. probably the um, the device, the devices, like in terms of the software and tools, that's always kind of like super rapid, always evolving. But I guess developing hardware is a bit slower, perhaps. Um, mm. and at the same time, for, again, students, perspective students who are looking to get the course, you also show a different way to do it with that VR. Just in case, you know, because at the same time, yeah. it's just an, an extra thing to buy. Um, I know, like in some parts of the world, like, you know, um, budgets are very, the wallet's very like kind of mm -hmm. under luck and key right now. Um, yeah. So equally, you, you show that in, in Blender too, just a way to kind of like get similar results in, in a yeah. fast and iterative way. Um, but in terms of like devices and gear you need, I myself still use the Oculus Rift. I think that's the first one. Um, yeah. which, and I, although like, I guess resolution wise is not, I mean, not the best, it still gives you exactly the results that you can make in the course and gives you that kind of like freedom that we're talking about. But just from your perspective, um, what gear do you use and maybe what gear would you recommend for people to get if they are interested in getting some? Um, I use the same as, as you, I think I run like the Oculus Rift S, um, I think no, it's not uh, anymore in sales. Uh, it's the Quest now, like the two. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say Oculus is the best brand now, and I would definitely go for Oculus. Like all, all the other are uh, not useless, but the, the main thing with Oculus it's now it's bought from uh, Adobe, and it's part of Meta as well. And the great thing about that, Adobe, as you know, it's like uh, the main uh, like uh, toolkit for uh, artists nowadays, almost. And they are developing a new tool called uh, Substance uh, 3D Modeler, which what I saw and what I expect, it will be like my dream. It will be like a mix of Gravity Sketch and Medium. So you will have the cool tool of Gravity Sketch, the precise tool, and at the same time, the freedom of Medium. So maybe uh, I tried the, the beta. It's still under development, so there is a lot of tool missing and you don't have the same freedom as uh, Medium. So I don't know how it will like um, end up. But there are a lot of hope inside this software for me. Uh, I, uh, if I can have something that is almost as clean as 3D code or something like that, but in VR, it would be like uh, perfect for me. It would be the, I won't even need like the refinement phase, maybe in like a Blender or stuff like that. I would go straight forward to the end result. And and so, yeah, Medium, the, the downside with Medium is they, they don't do like um, updates as often. So they are uh, full time on 3D modeler now on the other software. Yeah. And so the only update they do is like, um, you know, um, software update or they are not adding like new tools or new uh, new stuff. Um, that's a shame because there are some tools that you don't have, like for the, example, the array tool, you don't have it um, and stuff like that. Um, but the software is still like very, uh, um, I would say one of the best uh, medium. And then you have Gravity Sketch as well, which is a good one, but it's more, um, it's less uh, intuitive and um, abstract. You 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 kind of have to know what you are going to do uh, before jumping into it. Uh, so I don't I don't really like it for that. But it's more precise in a way as well, like the way you are doing stuff. Um, but yeah, in terms of um, hardware, Oculus, I would say for just for that reason because they are the the main. Uh, um, the main actor in VR now, and maybe they are not the best uh, like hardware, but they are the cheaper uh, and the best uh, like uh, quality price um, uh, ratio. So yeah, Oculus. I think that I will advise people, recommend you people to um, to buy Oculus. Yeah, um, totally agree. And I think the cool thing is, like you mentioned as well, is that you don't need like the the highest spec of VR gear to mm -hmm. get the results that you get. Um, it's effectively just medium you need and ultimately um, just the uh, just just the fact that you got the sensors and everything that you can move around in space. Um, mm -hmm. And it's I, I always find it interesting with the two different tools you mentioned, like it is almost the two things that you can use. I'm sure there's others available, but it is literally medium yeah. and gravity sketch. 
ones you could say i guess more hard surface focused or easier mm-hmm. for although you can do it in medium and medium is definitely more for abstract and um organic stuff but again you can easily do either in both um but just like in terms of the future in general like i guess we can just speculate it's only a matter of time before they make devices that are not as cumbersome more accessible and I guess more intuitive in terms of like just having to create something. You mentioned obviously Adobe uh, 3D model, I think they're calling it, um, yeah. which which might be that you don't need to have to export stuff to bring it to another package and do that. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be all in one goal. Um, but yeah, like what do you think about the future of VR and where it's headed? And I guess the kind of like based on obviously your assumptions and how you've been using the tools and everything and just looking at the space in general, like what kind of things do you think we'll have at our disposal? Um, well, I, I don't leave myself so much updates, you know, but I uh, don't like what the news and what's happening on VR, but I, I would say the modeler the, could be a really nice, really nice tool. I think if they are really putting the work and I really hope they are doing like uh, and listening as well to the people because I think it could be really, really a powerful tool, uh, especially with uh, Substance um, for the texturing work and stuff like that, you could look everything in VR, it could be like really crazy. Um, so, so yeah, I think it will be like, I don't know, like in the present and near future, it will be like the, the biggest uh, things happening as, as a tool. For the hardware, I, I saw that, uh, I think Oculus um, just released like a new uh, uh, headset, like a, a pro version or stuff, something like that, that is very, uh, uh, I think it's like uh, very, very expensive. Um, I'm not sure about that. I, I still think VR should be like uh, something that is affordable. Um, the, the Quest was actually something crazy that you don't even need the um, cable. You could use uh, the, the, the headset without cable, so that's really nice. Um, but at the same time, using a software that is um, medium, you still need to be plugged to your computer because this is very um, uh, power consuming. You really need to have a very powerful uh, GPU for that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how, it, I think the hardware will be better, like the resolution of the cask and stuff like that. It, it will be better for eyes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the downside with VR as well is there is a lot of people who have like a sickening feeling and, um, you know, you, you can live like, um, yeah, you can be sick. Uh, but at, at long as you don't move, uh, in real life. I think it's it's fine. Like most of the time when I'm working here, I'm not like I'm just sit down or maybe I will um, will stand, yeah. but I won't move that much. Like um, it's when you are moving in the air and that and then you are not moving in real life. It's where you your brain kind of uh, don't yeah. understand what's happening and you can have like the sickening feeling. But um, for the the sculpting tool, most of the time we have like our our design just in front of us, we, we just turn the design uh, in front of us. We don't actually move that much uh, around the, um, the design. So, so yeah, I don't know how it really evolves. Um, we'll see. Now, in terms of from your perspective as a creative, what is your ideal VR headset? Like, I guess someone listening right now, they're going to throw trillions of dollars at this and make to your spec. What would be the perfect <laughs> VR tool? Tool, uh, tool will be the. Uh, I think like Blender wanted as well to do something in VR at some point. I don't know if they are still working on that. Um, I think uh, again, a three D coat with a medium uh, freedom for me is almost one of the with uh, the cap- the um, capability of uh, handling as much uh, polygon as a three D coat. Like having like forty million polygon, it still work and it still run uh, smoothly. It will be like perfect. And with a bridge, you can just click on something, it, it imports everything, like maybe in Unreal or um, Blender. And with the substance uh, texturing stuff as well, you could do like the full texturing VR paint with the airbrush, stuff like that. In VR, it would be like, I think, like a really, really powerful. And you could just click somewhere with a bridge, it will import everything in your scene with your lighting. I mean, yeah, just being with Lego, but uh, without like and and something that is stable because we have a lot of bridge and stuff like that that are not very stable sometimes. Um, but yeah, and I think uh, yeah, 
And, and Blender is very, I think, a, a good like a um, package because you have everything in in one place. Um, so maybe you could even use Blender in VR, maybe at some point, like having like your scene in, your in Blender in cycle, like in real time, maybe like, you know, in, in 10 years or five years, the GPU would be so much, um, stronger with a good denoiser. You could like see, uh, in cycle in real time, like with a, a lot of FPS, maybe at some point, you know, yeah. um, but it will happen for sure. Like for sure. Um, there's like a I think a couple of reasons why, because I guess on one hand, the reason why I guess is maybe a bit muddy in terms of direction is because VR is trying to be in many things at once, like an entertainment thing, a gaming console, yep. and this creative tool. If you kind of like maybe separate them out and made a specific device for each of those purposes, you'd probably get more people adopting them. But I understand why companies mm -hmm. don't do that because it's like, you know, business it's stuff. Be, yeah, but, yeah. Right. Very expensive yeah. to develop for each, uh, yeah. But um, equally, I think like maybe looking at it in a more philosophical way, there's something about creating with both of your hands, um, which is maybe a strange thing to say. But like when we work digitally, it's literally our drawing hand with the stylus and that's pretty much it. Or maybe a mouse and a couple of hotkeys. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously with this pen and paper or paint or everything, again, similar situation, but you're still working on maybe a flat canvas. If... And I'm sure I head this way as well. But like, let's say fast forward to the future where creating is literally with your hands, like you can in VR. I think that does something to your brain creatively that all these amazing other tools that are timeless and been around for thousands of hundreds of thousands of years almost are still valid. But there's something more primitive and primal about, you know, working and sculpting in that particular way. And mm. at the moment, obviously, I'm sure like sculptors will rejoice in what i'm saying because they do that on a daily basis but like bringing that towards other aspects of like digital art you mentioned real time all these things imagine vfx using making vfx with you know like how you can in vr like just possibly yeah. endless um yeah. so it's it's exciting to see what can come ahead um and one thing i like about the way you create and again you show this in the course as well is you're not afraid of any tools but equally, mm -hmm. you don't waste your time on exploring things as long as what you use gets the job done. And another thing you use, which is, I guess, depending on your perspective, could be a controversial topic, but is the use of AI. And the way you use it is the way I prefer to use it because it's used as a creative tool, not as the mm -hmm. end goal. Um but again, like how, like again, like what's your, I guess, view in general of, I guess we can talk to AI specifically in a bit, but like in terms of when it comes to approaching tools and new things, I guess, what process do you tend to go through? Like to evaluate if this tool is good for you or not, and um, whether it's to be adopted or rejected? Like, do you go for a certain process or is it more kind of like you're drawn to it naturally kind of get thing, I guess? Um, yeah, I think most of the time when you hear about a tool is when you see some people like posting about it or you see some result and they show some crazy stuff that they, they were developing in their cave for a moment and they, they just came out, Hey, look at what I'm doing. So, um, so yeah, I think like you, you can see like the tool, then I think you must try it at least like to to see if maybe it's it's something that's gonna please you like for sure like uh, like VR for example um and then you I, I like like to see the limit of the tool as well like to see where where you where, where what are the boundary how you how you can push it really really um really high and but at the same time the, I, I want something again that is get, that can fit my workflow so something that is easily, uh, I can jump into it easily, but I can get out easily as well. And if it, it would be like a great addition and AY, for example, is I think for ideation phase, again, like for the having new idea or coming up with new shape, I think it's crazy. It's really cool for that. Um, and then you can do a study of uh, the result of AY to like maybe to study the shape and then take the shape to your, um, to your design. Uh, I think that's a great tool for that. Um, I think a great way as well, a way could develop, and I, I would like to see a way develop uh, in that direction, is like 
something that could be like integrated to Photoshop, maybe, or even it could be like another software or standalone. And let's say you have like a, a note from a client and the client is telling you, okay, like uh, you have like an image, uh, let's say we have like a Last of Us image with, uh, with Scar Destroy and a lot of Vine and stuff like that. And maybe the client will say, okay, I want um, a new car here uh, in the background, which is destroyed. Uh, and you could just mask the, the area and prompt in, a, um, in the AI, you're just saying like, I want a, a car destroy uh, this, uh, this brand of car maybe in the style of Last of Us. And it could just appear uh, and propose you like different results. It could be very great because all the, um, it could really destroy all and delete all the removes, all the um, uh, frustration part of the job. You know, when you, mm. the most, most cool part is when you are doing, the, you know, the, the big picture and the, the composition, the lighting, stuff like that. But when you start to get a, a lot of notes and uh, the supervisor or the art director is asking you to move the, the tree uh, two pixels on the right or the, this, um, this car two pixels on the left it, it gets very annoying and very, it's, it's where you start to have like a depression <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, the bad side of the job but um i think a way could be very strong for that like um, for the for the notes but then if a way at some point get to the point where you can just prompt and you have like a full concept art uh, finished uh, fleshed out I, I won't use it that much because it's not something that i would have fun with it uh, it's all about again in the course it's the same why, why I developed this workflow it's all because it's fun and creative mm -hmm. but if I don't have fun using like just prompting tapping prompt all the day on my computer uh, I won't use it uh, for me I think there are still there are still place like for people doing you know stuff even traditionally yeah, there are still like concept art and doing like pen and paper um, but yeah, anyway it's a big topic so in a way there's a lot of uh, lot of stuff happening with that yeah it's it's crazy um it's probably like the craziest and most impactful thing mm. and, and uh, I'll, I'll, even by saying it in that way it's kind of still doing it an understatement because like the way you just explained it as well like in one go it equally is a tool it's a threat it's yeah. a game changer it's um a new frontier it's all these all these crazy things in one go. And as humans, we're used to kind of seeing things in like small doses. And, yeah. you know, like the left hand is the different to the right hand. And, you know, all the body parts. Yeah. Are, this is all this thing in one crazy, weird thing. Um, and I guess like with anything, you just kind of like take the things that you like. And that's exactly what you've done um, in terms of like... And it's also clear, I think, to point out because... I don't know if it's about to put it this way, but like you're secure in your workflow, at least in terms of what you want and how you want to create. So therefore mm -hmm. that kind of makes it easy, I guess, to decide upon these things. Whereas, and I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, whereas if it becomes to the point where it is, oh, you don't need to make and make, make art anymore or generate ideas anymore and explore ideas anymore, you can just make a final image. I'm with you. Like that is not interesting. Mm -mm -mm. I, I'm not into like, whether it's like the image is cool and everything that's fine I'm sure people will like that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. from what I want and what I like yeah. to do as you crave and same as yourself is now I want to make those steps I want to go through that journey of generating yeah, exactly, ideas yeah. and everything but then equally AI is so powerful when it comes to helping you generate ideas um, mm -hmm. so yeah it's going to be interesting to see how this develops and I mean, like we mentioned with the VR stuff, it, it might will end up branching off into all these different realms where it's what it is for one select demographic versus what we need and everything mm -hmm. else as well. Um, but I guess just like one final note on AI, um, for many, it's a controversial topic because they see it as a form of theft, which in many cases it is. Um, <laughs> on another aspect, it's, I guess, a sense of insecurity because people think it, I'm not relevant anymore. What's the point in learning anything, especially ones that I guess yeah. may be developing stuff. Um, and then on the other side, it's just a case of maybe some people just reject it outright. What's, I guess, your take on that? Mm. If uh, is it something that afraid me or... Just what made, uh, yeah, I guess like just generally, like in, in AI in general, like um, 
what do you think of it? If that's, if that's yeah, yeah, a good um, question. No, it's definitely a complicated um, topics because there's so much stuff involved. But yeah, you know, it's even bigger than just you know our concept art industry. I mean, concept art industry is very small, and sometimes we we we, we don't re realize that it's really really small in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't represent that much. And a way, I think it's much more bigger than that. It will uh, touch every aspect of every industry at some point. Like, and it comes to the yeah to the point where uh, what what's like almost like the the meaning of life in a way. Like, what's uh, our goal? Like, if uh, a computer can replace us, uh, what we're gonna do? You know, just having fun and going outside. I don't I don't know. Maybe. Um, yeah, there is this game uh, Death Stranding from uh, Kojima, and in this in this game, basically the computer gets so much evolved at some point that there is some people that you know they they go they go like um, out of the uh, of the society a bit, and the, they go because they 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 have no meaning in life anymore. Like everything is. They, they don't any, they do anything like in their daily life because everything is replaced by uh, computer and uh, robotics and so um, there is this people this group of people that you know they they, they want to do things by uh, by human um, and they don't want like computer to do any, everything for them so i think he, i don't know if he, it will evolve in that sense uh, of course there is a, there will be a huge problem even like for work and stuff like that i mean it, it will see so much stuff so but at the same time, it, it will be a great tool huh, for sure. But but maybe it will cut off a lot of a lot of work in our industry. So yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting because in many ways, like it's it's not just one. I guess I'm sure you agree. Like one emotion you can pin on it. It's like multiple at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, there's fear, but there's excitement. There's what I'm going for now. With it, I'm very bored of it in in a way. Um, Whereas maybe a few months ago, I was like, oh, this is such a great creative tool yeah, yeah. to the point where it was like, oh, I've kind of like, you know, like, like you mentioned computer game, like you start for the first 10 minutes, I think it's awesome. And then after just obviously I see what this is and it's like, okay, whatever. Um, but I know that will kind of change. Um, so it's, the way I like to think of it at this moment in time is, because I was like, when I was growing up, it was from the switch between analog to digital. So mm. digital tools, as they are, I guess, now, I was getting more into in my, I guess, teenage years to late teens, early 20s. Um, I think it was in my 20s when the internet or YouTube kind of came out. So <laughs> I saw that difference between, I guess, the analog way to the digital way. And I, I'm probably more at like the bridge generation. And then my kids and even people maybe a bit older than them are kind of the purely digital internet connected mm -hmm. generation um so what internet has done for society and what maybe smartphones have done for technology and social media has done for communication is although we exist in it and it's fine and we're still getting along with things it's a massive departure from what it was before and yeah. as a result you lose some of the good stuff from that way but you gain some new stuff yeah. and uh, wherever we think i guess like it's the Pandora's box is open and wherever it changes to, we just have to yeah. adapt. And I guess as artists, exactly, we're all, yeah. yeah. And I guess as artists, we're always adapting, which I guess is no difference. Um, but something you also mentioned, I want to touch upon there as well. First of all, you mentioned Death Stranding. I love that game. It's one of the best games <laughs> I've ever played. This is just amazing. Yeah. Um, not just only in terms of gameplay, but in terms of like the story and everything. So I'm Kojima, yeah. I'm such a fanboy. But, a genius. <laughs> <laughs> but also um, you mentioned there, like, I guess, meaning you touch upon the word meaning like you know like that kind of makes you question the meaning of life or whatever or etc um and one thing that we do as artists is when we make stuff we always uh, it does give that kind of meaning or at least some kind of some kind of meaning to what you're mm -hmm. making it always goes beyond just making something cool there's always something yeah. deeper in there and before we get into more philosophical stuff <laughs> something you do in the course as well which we touched upon earlier as well is the meaning you put in, like, you know, when, when you make your, I guess, your mood board and really plan everything out to building all these different props and things just to build universe out to make the paintings that you make in the final images. Um, just in terms of the subject matter of the imagery that you make in the course itself, I'd love to know more about the story 
that we see with the characters and the environment and the props that you made like l tell me about this world so um, so the simple story behind the, the world. most of the time I start with a really simple story it's more about the design most of my work is more about the, the design and creating a world and shape language um and you, you kind of see like it's, most of the time it's really simple like it would be like a if we could describe like a, a group of characters is crossing a bridge. It's simple as that, but I will be maybe doing like 10 different projects with 10 different uh, design of bridge. <laughs> um, but yeah, in this world, we have like a small group of characters. So they are um, human characters. Um, so it's uh, in, the, in the future, it's a sci-fi. And those characters are uh, explorers. So basically like a, a scout, scout guys which their job is basically to explore the landscape and to discover this world. They maybe know a bit more about what this world is about. And uh, in the first part, uh, in this course, I, I explore the, the landscape of around their, their base. And we saw how the rocks are looking, the, the plants around, stuff like that. Uh, and then the second part of the course will be more about their base, actually where they land on the planet and so how... Uh, how they they are living and they develop their, their base and stuff like that. And so that's why the, the first course is more, I would say, like beginner intermediate because the subject is um, more friendly to um, to making uh, error and mistakes mm -hmm. um, because with something that is very organic and, you know, landscape, stuff like that, you, you cannot really do big mistakes. Uh, it's not like a character where you, if it's a human, you have like to have symmetric eyes and stuff like that. You know, you can really uh, do a, that big mistake like that. Um, same with vehicle and earth surface in general. I would say it's a bit more, uh, you have like kind of understand maybe the design aspect and, uh, um, you know, the mathematical proportion, stuff like that. It's a bit more uh, tricky, I would say. And you have to... Uh, to learn those kind of things. It's the same for organic stuff. Of, of course, you use the same principle, but again, um, it won't be seen as much. Like, um, And so, yeah, we see those characters. And most of the time, I do projects like that because I really love to travel as well, a lot. And um, and for me, it's a way to travel and you know to, to go in this world and to develop this world and think about this world, what, what it looks like and stuff like that. So, so yeah sick you can definitely see the explorer theme throughout mm. not just only in terms of like, i guess the, the final image because what's cooler than exploring a new world right um especially with badass gear and weaponry and everything <laughs> else that you have um but equally in terms of it's, it's very poetic in my, in my opinion because it ties in with again your workflow which is also like you said you said fun but also very exploratory if i feel because again that's the way you ideate in VR, which which again is just a tool, right? Like you can easily do that in anything else, even if you want to do it with clay or whatever. Like, you know, you can always just get those happy accidents, like you mentioned, in other mm -hmm. ways as well. But I'm sure you'd agree the reason why the choices that we make as creatives are cool because you have that kind of like switch that's on, which always is explore, exploration mode. This could be this, mm -hmm. that could be this, and this is going to be this. Um... But in terms of like, I know you touched upon it a little bit there as well. In terms of like how this course is made or suitable for beginner to intermediate, which is, I guess, the perfect ramp into the second course, um, which does go a little bit more deeper into all this kind of stuff as well. Um, mm -hmm. What specific or conscious choices did you make to ensure that this is going to be friendly for the beginner? slash intermediate artist who is looking to advance their skills like did you put anything specific in the course or were you doing anything deliberately in terms of the learning and the in the curriculum to ensure that the beginner is catered for yeah so um, i would say before the course my workflow was pretty chaotic it, it will be like the same uh, structure but it will be more chaotic Mm -hmm. And so doing the course helped me a lot with the uh, organization. I have something that is very structured and precise for the students. So they, they can like um, uh, re copy and do the same thing and it will work in a way, um, at least for the structure and the result. Um, and yeah, so I would say like VR is a very simple tool. 
this is very not complicated in terms of technical aspect it's very easy to to handle um in blender and sim i simplify everything like the um the sculpt the sculpting tool again is quite simple but i use some techniques that are not that much complicated i think to to understand uh the the material uh, aspect and texturing tool uh, again i go over that it's more important to find a very good texture that fits your world rather than doing like uh, again 20 20 different nodes in uh, with 10 20 different metal for one asset uh, as something that look already good on your asset a texture that uh, look good so again I, I simplify basically everything and so by simplifying everything i still have like some image that i i, I love at the end so uh I was thinking, you know, you, you can just work like, like that at the end of the day, it still work. And it's all about as well. I speak a lot about your fundamentals as well. So by simplifying the workflow, it will uh, rely more on your fundamentals in a way because um, you cannot cheat that much because it's more straightforward to the to the goal. So you have to to have some an asset that is interesting already to look. You have to find a texture that is interesting to look because you are not cheating with a lot of different materials or a lot of different stuff. So it really, I think it's a more slow pace. Maybe if you're beginning, you, you will, you won't go as fast, but I think it's, it's a great way to learn making good choice as well. Like the um, making, a, you know, um, decision making is a nice skill as well, uh, especially a, a job, because if you are not taking a good decision, maybe you are going to spend like four hours in the, um, you know, for nothing. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, it's a lot, but uh, in a way it's a lot about good decision making and making like the um taking the right texture putting like the making the right la layout with the right camera uh, that show your story um the best possible and tell your story the best possible way so i go over the lighting as well the camera placement stuff like that um and again it's at the same time i'm speaking a lot about, about a lot about happy accident and every step uh, in, in the workflow i embrace happy accident and I always try to have something that will create a PXNet in a way. And that's why I would say like the, the, you know, you have all those happy accidents. So maybe the result you sketch, the, the very early sketch that you did will, will be completely different, but by, um, at the very end, um, still I have some sketch that I have done in 2D that are very similar to the, um, to the, to the final painting, um, because even it's, the sketch is different, like the composition. You can still use uh, the composition for your sketch, and maybe the shape will be slightly different and stuff like that. But you know, the composition will be maybe uh, quite close to the to your earlier uh, idea. But uh, yeah, and Photoshop the paint over face again. I, I've done something very structured for the for the workflow. I have something very precise that you know you have each step in your paint over, so you just you know uh, do each step one by one. And one thing that I, I try to um, to point out as well is do not jump into the next step if you are not happy your, with your actual step. Um, I think that's something that I, I read in a research meet uh, book uh, à la prima. And it's, it's um, a fine art painter. Um, he was a fine art painter, uh, which is, I think, like one of a great aspiration, a lot of concept artists about uh, brushwork as well. And he, he, he yeah, he... In this book, he, he talk about like, no, do not skip a step that if you are not happy with it, um, because it, it, at some point it will catch you, it will catch you and you know, you will feel that some, there are some points that are some weakness in your image or maybe in your design or your texturing that something that you are not happy with it. And it, it will catch you at some point and you are not going to be very happy with the final result, maybe. So, so maybe for the, the beginner, you, you should like really, you know, take your time. It's not about rushing stuff try like to really push each step to the to your limit almost and find really something um, that you are really happy with it that look really good to to your eye um so yeah yeah dude very very well put um couple of things i just want to jump on and this is the things you mentioned is first and that was my f before before we actually spoke um when i checked out the course one of the f one of the key takeaway that i took from this was the fact that is how to work correctly and smartly and like you said you don't need like 20 different nodes and all these kind of things it's just mm -hmm. simplify everything to the point where there's nothing left to simplify then <laughs> have fun um because as i've learned the hard way is 
having a happy accident while everything else is an ongoing accident is not really a good thing because <laughs> you know you're trying to figure out things, put out fires, and the creativity yeah. goes. But when everything <laughs> is in perfect place and you know already, like, well, I'll put it this way: once you develop this workflow, you will have trust in the workflow, knowing that mm -hmm. whatever you throw at it, you're going to get a good result. You know, you're not yeah. going to have some kind of like failure or unhappy accident like that's mm -hmm. i would even go out on a limb and say that's impossible um and then the rest is just about nurturing your own i guess um visual library your own mm -hmm. visual philosophy and your own design philosophy and all that kind of stuff as well um so yeah kudos for developing that because a it's going to be great for whoever takes it and also b it sets you up perfectly for the second course as well um which you go even more detail into that but again it's just um yeah well, well it's just going to be awesome for that um <laughs> also what you just mentioned there as well about not moving on until you get basically you're happy with that particular step or you know that it's not solid and wobbly Firstly, mm -hmm. I wish the guys who made the Game of Thrones show did that for the final few seasons because <laughs> it would have been great. Um, yeah. But equally, the, the, something that you mentioned there, like I weirdly enough heard it a few days ago from an author and the author was speaking about how they made the book and how they read the story together. And it's a quite a complex story, a lot of narrative, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what she said, which is exact repeating what you just mentioned as well, is that something wasn't concluding correctly or it wasn't right. And then when you look back at it, it was something that wasn't set up properly four or five chapters prior. So mm -hmm. she had to delete everything, go back to that, restructure it again, and then it ended yeah. perfectly. Um, and as always, that's like, I think one of the most ultimate piece of advice you can give to anybody, even though it's tough on a deadline sometimes, but yeah, you got to just like, nail or at least have that kind of i guess mindset where to progress when it's time to progress and i guess you'll kind of know when you have to progress right like you'll know where it's at that okay i'm happy with this and then we'll move on right yeah yeah exactly and, yeah mm. and in terms of like i guess just one one final thing before we uh wrap up where does your inspiration come from and that's quite like a a very vague question to ask a creative because inspiration come from anywhere and also you can do it deliberately depending on the job as well yeah. but what kind of things make you tick creatively because you mentioned photography as well. i'm sure that's a big big influence in terms of yeah. your work and you can kind of see it as well but yeah what are kind of like the things that definitely make you tick and no matter what if you come across that particular i guess element or emotion or whatever it might be you know, the creativity goes crazy. Mm, I would say I, I love like to look at uh, and to watch a lot of images. Um, f film as well is a big thing. Like I love films, uh, especially the like Baraka and Samsara is um, one of my um, favorite movies. Um, they are pretty good like, in terms of uh, composition and stuff like that. I love those. Um, yeah, crazy. Um, and then uh, I love to watch like, uh, I don't know, like cool stuff, cool, cool plants, cool exotic plants, uh, cool mineral stuff, ar architecture, everything. I go in Pinterest. Every time I go in Pinterest, I'm so happy because I, <laughs> I don't know. The algorithm is so good. Uh, I'm always happy with the result and the, the images that they show me. It, there's so many cool things in life, like from different creators in different, like, you know, it could be even in fashion for, for clothes or, or stuff like that. And, and one trick that I really love to do that I, I, uh, that I teach in the course is giving a twist to your design. So most of the time it's something that, that works, uh, at least for me. So I will take like, for example, my characters, my character is, uh, uh, is a lot about uh, military equipment. So this is some, some, something that uh, I teach in, actually in the second course. Um, but well, I, I mix some, uh, some close fashion design with it, you know, and, and all the time, like uh, with some, you know, cool random shape that look, I don't know, it just look cool. It's maybe not functional, but uh, there is some part that are functional on the character that tells the story that, you know, this is functional. And then you have uh, room for, you know, uh, express yourself and something that is more maybe crazy and uh, that just look good. 
And I did the same for the for the landscape. For the landscape, I have something like in mind, and I wanted as well to the to have the the clay feeling to the landscape, um, and have some exotic plants that uh, you know light up in the dark and stuff like that. So always have like uh, you know you have maybe you start to to have your references from real life, and then you had some twist, some idea like oh I couldn't bring that, and but yeah, in terms of inspiration, like most of the time uh, when I open uh, Pinterest, I. I already have 10 different projects in mind. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, does that ever become a problem for you? Like, how do you kind of like tame, tame your mind in that sense? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to stick to one project and, you know, finish it too. Uh, I, I have a lot of projects uh, unfinished, <laughs> but I think a lot of people are in the same boat. Um, but those projects, I'm, I don't regret, you know, to not finish them, I think they are they are maybe learning a project that you won't finish and won't show, but that's fine. Maybe you know, even if they have great potential or stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think again, if you have a structure and organize uh, um, workflow, even for the um, the references and stuff like that, you can um, start to really uh, fall in love with your project and you really want to to push it to the next level. Instead of, you know, if you just grab two or three pictures and you start seeking and maybe you are not, you know, as much involved in the project, so you are not going to uh, push it really far. And maybe as well, putting a deadline for you can help. Um, definitely something that I, I did in the past, putting deadline and maybe as well doing the project at the same time with a friend uh, or with different people. Uh, you you are in group and you, you tell uh, you know to the group you know we have one month to do the project and what was results you would like at the end of the month and you start to giving uh, feedbacks each other and I think this kind of pressure uh, will definitely help you know to to really push the project at the end even if it's not perfect it's gonna it's not gonna be perfect but um, at least it's finished and you have something to show in your portfolio or to the world. <laughs> Amazing advice. And I guess just to wrap up the the podcast on, I guess, some final amazing advice is, do you have any, I guess, tips or advice or just general, I guess, final thoughts or words for your students that who are taking the course as we speak or are looking to take the course? Um, anything that maybe would help them to... I guess, get the most out of the course? Mm, focus more on your actual project rather than mine. Um, I would say like try to have something that it's really you, your inspiration, your, you know, your world, your work. Um, I know that's completely fine if you, if you try to copy what I'm doing and, you know, we all, oh, we all do that. But I think at the end of the day, you are going to be more happier and have more fun if you are, uh, doing your stuff. Um, one one way I, I love to learn uh, and I'm still doing it is um, when I was beginning, I was doing almost the exact same thing of the um, of the teacher, um, and then I will redo the project with the same techniques but completely different. I will do my stuff. So you know, you could maybe copy what I'm doing and try to have something you know quite. Um, equivalent and similar but then maybe redoing the same project and doing the same techniques and maybe going jumping back into some part of you know it's maybe more blurred for you you want to go deeper into that and doing your re own project you know something that is going to be your stuff and you're going to be attached and love it and you'll be really proud to be to have it and yeah so um, so doing your own stuff for sure will be something that will uh um, put you in a in a place that you are more uh, detached from the industry, more unique maybe, and uh, it will be uh, definitely a great way for uh, to to stand out uh, in your portfolio from the other. Amazing, and I know it's going to be amazing with the the work that people are going to create, and I'm sure there would definitely be. I'm, I'm excited to see, like you just mentioned, the worlds that they end up creating. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when they, because the workflow is solid and it will enable anyone to make whatever they want to make. I know that's quite a big statement, but I'm, I'll stand behind that. One million percent. <laughs> um, because the same way as 
I can be greedy thinking that, okay, I know how I'm going to use this for my stuff. I also enjoyed the stuff that you made. Mm-hmm. And not just in terms of like how it is from artist to artist, like look, appreciating it from a visual sense, but also like like you mentioned, like, you know, the, the exploration aspect and what this world is. Equally, I'm going to be excited to see what students and other artists are going to be doing with that as well. Um, so yeah, thank you for making this gem. And the best thing about this is this is Dynamic Concept Art 1. Looking forward to the second one. But <laughs> Louis, it was amazing chatting with you. Thank you for your time. And thank this was a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for uh, all the people who are taking the course and for uh, everyone who listen. So yeah, and don't hesitate to reach out to me, um, to DM me for feedbacks or even like if you have any question about the course or anything. A massive thanks to Louis for that amazing conversation. Louis course, Dynamic Concept Art 1, is available now. Sign up today and be sure to give Louis and Learn Square to follow. Till next time.